Up next, Slave One. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Intercenter Modeler. So it is February of 2021, and as promised, I'm back here on the channel to start my first build. I took off the month of January from model building, and I'm ready to go. Uh, I was going to start the year with the 2001 EVA pod. However, as I pulled the model out and started to look at what I needed for that project, uh, I realized I needed to get a few other things for it, and it just wasn't able to get the stuff here on time to uh, kick off the year with that. It is going to be a big project, probably cover at least, I don't know, two or three video segments to finish that model um, and uh, but a number of things I want to do with it so uh, I'm gonna set that aside for now while I wait for stuff to get in and begin the year with this slave one model from Bandai it's a 1 144 scale model of the ship uh, I found this in Japan a couple years ago when I was there and snatched it up as it was on sale with a couple of other kits and you know as big of a Star Wars fan as I am and I, I love all the characters love all the ships and designs um, I don't know, I was never really that all that interested in building Slave One, but uh, came to have a new appreciation of the ship after last season of Mandalorian, so that's what inspired me to start off with Slave One. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look inside the box here now, and uh, you can see the instructions, uh, the usual Bandai uh, diagrams, and uh, gives a painting guide, which I'll talk about painting here in just a minute. Uh, let me go ahead and lay these out for you guys. All right, well, there are seven trees all together that uh, the parts are all connected to, and the, the model comes molded in various colors of plastic, so if you did not want to paint the model, you could just assemble it, although it would look like a ship right off the assembly line. So what we have on this tree now is the outer skirt that is red, and then we've got the connections to the wings here. And uh, this tree also has the clear parts, including that curved windshield and the covers for the engines. All right, so this tree is molded in a light green plastic and included here are parts for the outer housing of the cockpit area and uh, parts that go to the lower sections of the ship. And uh, as you look closely, we can see some nice detailing as we've come to expect from Bandai. And this tree here now shifts to a light gray color. Uh, these are all parts that have to do with the stabilizers. All right, so now we have trees that are molded in dark gray, and these parts now are for the underside of the ship, as well as the interior of the cockpit. Loading ramp. And this is tree E. Uh, this one includes all the parts that we will use to detail the underside of the ship. And this final tree is the stand that's included. And as is consistent with other Bandai kits, uh, this model includes two sheets for markings. You can either use a decal sheet, a standard decal sheet, or you can use the others that are basically stickers. All right, so as for the colors now, I'm going to be using this grid provided by a website called Mech9. And as you can see, they've broken down all of the colors that are needed for this model kit and also give you the percentages on how to mix them uh, to achieve the different uh, shades that you need. And uh, they've also further have broken them down by brand. So I'm going to be using the Vallejo brand and going with their recommendations. Now this is one reference that I have found extremely helpful when building uh, Star Wars models. This is called Sculpting a Galaxy Inside the Star Wars Model Shop by Lauren Peterson. This has some phenomenal pictures of all the miniatures they've used uh, for filming Star Wars and uh, they have a section of course for Slave One. Let me just go ahead and zoom in on this for you. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of variation here when it comes to all the different shades that are on this model. So for example, if you look at that red skirt that's around the ship, uh, you can see that there are actually two shades of red uh, along with the underlying lighter coat of what looks to be a light gray. And then also on these parts here, you can see there's a very fine stippling on one side there. And in order to achieve this, I think the best way at this scale is to use the hairspray and salt technique. So I probably will use a chipping fluid as well to get some of the bigger, more geographic looking patterns that you see on the bottom sections of the ship. But to get that really fine detail, I think the salt is still the best way to go. And here in this shot, we've got a beautiful picture of the underside of the ship showing all the incredible detail that was on the studio miniature. And you can see all the areas there that are dirtied up and, and weathered. And you can see where that chipping effect needs to be applied. 
And uh, the last thing I need to touch on is lighting because I've decided not to do that. I know that's probably going to disappoint some of you guys, but um, you know, there's not a lot of room to light the kit back here, but uh, no doubt you can find a way with SMDs. You certainly can be able to feed the wires through. Uh, I'm sure you can find a way to do that. Uh, but I also want to be able to display the ship in a landed configuration too, to be able to take it off the stand and, and display it this way as well. And if I were to feed lights through that, you'd be committed to just re uh, displaying it upright like this. Uh, you know, Lighting is one of these things that we all think about doing now to all of our models because of all the great options that are available out there for lighting. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to make this a straight build and work on the weathering and uh, again, just do my best to come up with a ship that looks like that studio miniature. So following the instructions, the first step was to construct the cockpit along with placing Boba Fett into his chair. I did my best to replicate the colors of Boba Fett's armor onto the small figure and the cockpit area was painted in a dark gray. And this is a cool little feature. You'll note that the cockpit actually rotates uh, just as the ship rotates its position when it takes off and lands. Okay, well now that the cockpit is together, it's now time to start weathering. So I'm going to begin with the skirt that surrounds the ship here. And if we look closely here, there are three shades we're going to have to apply. Uh, for the lighter shade, I'm going to be using Tester's Camouflage Gray. So initially I thought it would be a good idea to apply the camouflage gray first and then build up from there. But based on the pattern that I'm seeing, I think I get a better shot at replicating the look by applying the light reddish color first, then the camo, and then the darkest uh, shade of brown red. So for that light brown color, what I have here is a mix of hull red, white, and ivory. Percentages are approximately 50, 30, and 20 respectively there. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this and then we'll get started with the application of the salt and hairspray technique. Okay, so here's the color applied now and after that dried I did apply an enamel coating over this to seal that paint uh, because we don't want the technique to alter uh, this color at all here. So next is to go ahead and apply some hairspray and some salt. Now, uh, what we have here is ordinary table salt. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the butt end of a knife here to grind it into a finer powder. So we can get a, an appearance of finer, smaller stippling on our model surface. So in that container now is our hairspray and I just use the stuff that I got at CVS for five bucks. So uh, what we're gonna do is I uh, have my reference right over there. And I'm just going to kind of go along and apply the salt and the hairspray here. And once I'm done, we'll apply the camo gray and hopefully this will turn out. Alright, so this is how it turned out, and the reason I like this technique, for this particular scale anyway, is because we are getting this very fine stippling, which I think is appropriate for this size. And this is the other side here. Alright, so here we have these pieces now completed, and I'm very pleased with how it all turned out. It didn't start out so well, however, because I initially deviated from my plan of using the hairspray and salt technique by using liquid mask, as you can see here over the initial uh, color scheme that I had there and unfortunately it did not come out right so I thought I would have to start completely over however uh, before I did that I decided just to apply the hairspray and salt technique over the areas that I had used liquid mask and that looked much better and then I just refined the look with my brushes as you see here just taking the camel gray and that pinkish color and dabbing it little by little along all of these different areas uh, the red brown color I initially thought came out too brown and you know the problem with using reference pictures is that it's really hard to tell exactly what color you're supposed to be applying there because they can vary so greatly on the lighting and whether the pictures already faded um, but what I decided to do was to take some red and add it to my mixture and I just used a blunt brush to dab that on just to give it a little bit more of a reddish tone and I think I'm satisfied with how this is looking now so 
the next step is to go ahead and start working on the back side, which what I should have done initially was to prime this gray as well, so don't forget to do that when you do your model. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and mask this part over, apply the primer, and then the light gray, which is what is needed for the back side. So let's stop a second just to look at our reference picture again here. So on the back side, there are going to be a couple shades of gray, uh, as well as this greenish color. I'm not sure if this is showing across in the video that well. but uh, So this piece here, along with this assembly, and this piece is a lighter shade, which I'm going to go ahead and use the camouflage gray for those. And uh, I'm going to use this other uh, gray called wolf gray. I'll list all these colors at the end for the other shade. So this is going to include the back side uh, of that skirt, as well as this assembly here and this here. As for the shading and the weathering, I'm going to do this as I go along and be easier to do that uh, to be able to get into some of these places. So as you see here, I used the Tamiya weathering kit already to get that scorching along the edge. And I'm going to continue to use the Tamiya weathering kit to apply the rust and some of the brown shades that we see along here, as well as some of the other scorching and soot that is in some of these other assemblies. And also plan to do some of this chipping here with just using a brush. Okay, well the backside is completed. All the, the pieces have been put into place now and um, the weathering uh, that I did along the way went really well. Very pleased with the results and uh, just continuously amazed at the amount of detail that they've provided here. Um, you know, I was installing the stabilizers and uh, I had noticed that there's this tiny little, what appeared to be a little chip there on the wing. Uh, if you look on this side, there isn't any. And for a minute, I thought I had done that uh, accidentally when I was maybe taking the part off the, the uh, tree. But if you look over here at our reference picture, you'll see that same little detail right there. So it is this type of attention that makes these Bandai kits so great. All right, well, um, turning now to the front side here, um, we're going to go ahead and begin completion of the last phase, which is to put together the rest of the body and to weather that and detail it. So let's go ahead and move on with that. Okay, it's now time to apply our salt technique to these pieces here. This is the piece that is on the port side that has most of the stippling and speckles. So for the undercoat that's going to shine through with our salt and the hairspray technique, I didn't want to go with the camouflage gray because I thought that would be too bright. The effect as you look at the studio model is a lot more subtle than that. So, uh, what I decided to do is make my own color here. This is a very light shade of, of green. And uh, this is really a mix of these two colors. This is uh, green zinc and panzer um, olive. I started out with basically about a 60-40 mix, I'd say. And then to that mix, I ended up adding uh, about a 20% hellblau, followed by a 5% mix of gold gray into it. So just kind of mess with the shades. You know, with these sorts of things, just, uh, I wish I could give you a formula, but uh, this is just what I think is going to look right. So you always have to kind of fiddle with the percentages a little bit there. It's just to kind of give you an idea. All right, so ready now to apply that onto our pieces here. And I think I'll be using this also for the main body as well. Um, but we'll start off with these, and then we'll apply our salt and hairspray technique to these. Okay, so just as before, I chose to brush the hairspray on by hand versus using the airbrush since these pieces are small. I did cover the entire piece, however, rather than just certain sections, and when done, sprinkled on salt. And of course, after this was dried, the dark green paint was applied. And when it came time to dissolving the salt, you'll note here that I'm carefully dabbing on water versus rubbing because we want those fine, spot-like paint defects. All right, so this is now the completed wing root, and you can see that the stippling worked out real nicely here with that salt technique. So uh, I covered it with a clear coat for now just to protect that, and we'll move on. 
All right, well, it took a little bit of testing to get the color to what I felt looked right. Um, what I'm referring to now is this light green shade that is going to cover the remainder of the model. And you can see it's all over this module here, um, all the way down here. So uh, what we've got then are a few different colors. We have that light green shade that I applied first. Um, and then what I did was I used my mix to paint over that and used a little bit of hairspray on the side there. And you can see we have some nice contrast. Now to come up with this color, um, like I said, it took a little bit to uh, get it to the shade I felt looked proper. The Mech 9 website suggests using a 75% flat white with a 15% neutral gray and 10% of uh, this green they refer to as H6, which the equivalent of is this um, black green here from Vallejo. Now I did try that and maybe I just wasn't getting the percentages correct, but it didn't really look uh, correct to me. So I ended up um, adding just a tiny bit of this dark green from testers and then some um, camouflage gray to lighten it up and uh, this is what I ended up with I think that's going to work out well. So um, to get the chipping effect now on this part of the hull uh, because there are some larger areas um, we don't really have to use any of the salt for getting these large uh, patches and um, so um, I could go ahead and use hairspray, which is, again, what I did here for this. Um, but I thought for the sake of this uh, video, I would go ahead and use this chipping fluid from AK Interactive. Uh, it's interesting when you compare the two, it almost looks the same. So maybe, uh, I'm really not sure uh, what the difference is, but this is supposed to um, take the place of the hairspray technique. So the idea is you uh, airbrush this on your model and you want to provide, uh, he says, uh, you want to apply about two to three coats, then you want to apply the color that you'll be chipping. So, um, let me go ahead and get this into the airbrush, and we'll go ahead and coat all our parts, and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so the pieces are now ready to be weathered and chipped, and uh, so I followed the instructions by applying a couple coatings of this onto the pieces. One observation uh, is that this came out rather thick out of the airbrush. Um, kind of clumpy, actually. Um, I have a feeling the hairspray might have come out a little smoother, uh, but because it's sprayed on that way and it dried that way, when you apply your paint, it did come out with a little bit of a texture, uh, which in this case isn't going to matter because this ship is supposed to be pretty beaten up uh, anyway. So, um, But that's just an observation, uh, something to, to give some thought to if you plan on using that. So I'm going to go ahead and use these reference pictures here provided in the instructions um, as I compare them to pictures uh, of the studio miniature. They look really, really close as to how the weathering is placed onto the ship here. So uh, let's give it a go. Okay, well that chipping fluid worked really well, so I would recommend it for this part of it because again these are fairly large patches and that chipping fluid uh, does uh, make it easy to um, rub away that paint as you saw there. Also use a toothpick, particularly when you're getting close to some of these edges here. I uh, just tried to duplicate what was in those pictures there and I think overall it turned out pretty well. And this is the cockpit that's partially been put together. I just uh, did that so that I could make sure that I'm uh, as I was chipping the areas there that it went along with uh, the reference photos. Once the ship was assembled, it was time to move on to the decals. There aren't many, but the ones that are provided here are small and include all of these little markings. There was also this wedge-shaped decal that goes next to the loading ramp, which I weathered along the edges with some light brown. 
Okay guys, well it's now time to apply a wash and the reason this is necessary is because there are a lot of little details and panel lines that we want to enhance and uh, certainly Star Wars models are not clean by any means so we want them to look a little bit grimy. Uh, one of my favorite ways to do this with these particular smaller scale models is by using this uh, stuff by MIG Ammo and uh, what I love about this uh, particular type of wash is that when you place it onto your model um, and you'll see as I do this here, uh, you allow it to dry and then you're going to use your odorless thinner to clean it up. And what I found as you do that is you're able to move the pigment around and build up grime and uh, soot all along these tiny little corners and things, which I sometimes find difficult to do with these products here, which obviously there are other ways to do washes. You can use uh, craft paint like this. This one from Vallejo works fairly decently. But uh, for our purposes here, we're going to go ahead and use this product. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the process as I go along. So I'll speed the video up a little bit here as I apply the wash along the panel lines and different detailed areas. And slowing the video down for this part of the process, once the wash is dry, I'm now using a Q-tip along with the odorless thinner and some rags to clean up the surface. And as you can see, I can push some of the pigment down to all of these little corners to provide the buildup of grime and soot. And the backside was fairly easy to finish since I did a lot of weathering during the assembly. And now the final piece to work on is the display base, which uh, as you might recall is fairly plain. So what I've decided to do here was to create some added detailing by scribing in some panel lines and adding in some styrene rods and plastic pieces. So I'll finish up this process and I'll show you the completed project in just a second. All right, guys, here we have the completed 1 144 scale Slave 1 from Bandai. When completed, the model measures 6 inches in length and wingspan and makes a very nice replica of the ship. As with other Bandai kits, the assembly is simple and straightforward. Pieces slide and fit together very well. The kit is engineered to require no seams that have to be addressed. Details are crisp and appear to be pretty accurate when compared to shots of the studio miniature. So, as said at the beginning of the video, the challenge here is therefore not construction, but painting, detailing, and weathering. This is a great kit to unleash all your skills in this area of model building, and it was fun to try and match up what is seen in reference pictures. So the kit could be painted to represent Django or Boba Fett's ship. I, of course, chose to paint mine with the scheme as seen in the original trilogy, reflecting Boba Fett's green and red colors. Rather than going into any details of the colors, since that was covered in the video, I will provide the approximated formulas in the description below and in this diagram, which will be available to any of my subscribers if you feel it might be helpful. Bear in mind, these are only estimated percentages. You should really play with them a little bit in order to get them to your liking before mixing the batch that you'll be applying to your model. As for the color choices, I used the chart that I made reference to at the beginning of the video from the website mech9.com. However, I did end up deviating from it since I found it difficult uh, to locate some of the recommended colors. When done, I ended up applying about eight shades of color trying to match the studio model, which has varying shades of different colors. And in the end, I'm satisfied with the way all of the shades turned out, and I feel it's a decent approximation of the model. As you saw in the video, the weathering involved first achieving the chipped and worn appearance of the hull, followed by dirtying it up with a wash. I felt the salt and hairspray technique was the right way to go for the smaller spot-like defects needed for the brown skirt and green wing roots, uh, while the chipping fluid was ideal for the rest of the ship. I'm very happy with how you can see all of the various layers of paint upon close inspection, and I think it gives it a sense of realism. When it came time to applying the wash, the Starship streak fluid from MIG Ammo worked perfectly to create the grime and dirt buildup, and this also helped to enhance the panel lines. The last piece to add on was the main windshield, and to achieve an added shine, I dipped it into Future Acrylic Liquid Floor Wax, which is an old trick that really works well to give it the look of polished glass. And by the way, I believe it's been renamed Pledge Floor Gloss. Wrapping up the bill were the modifications to the stand, which made it look more interesting than what was provided. And when displaying it on the stand, if you'd like to display it in the flying configuration like I have it here, it's a matter of taking this piece off, which is meant to be removable for this purpose. And one last thing I wanted to make mention of here, at the beginning of the video, I had told you guys I decided not to light the ship because I wanted to be able to have the option to display the model in uh, the flying configuration or the landed configuration. Well, it turns out 
I'm going to be stuck displaying it this way because of a mishap that occurred at the very end as I was wrapping things up. I unfortunately broke off a tiny little piece here um, that joins the uh, stabilizer here to this bar and uh, because of that it took away the option. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is and uh, I, I'm still happy with my decision. I was glad that um, the model turned out the way it did and uh, it allowed me to be able to concentrate on really what I enjoyed doing about this project which is the weathering and the detailing so it certainly stands on, it, on its own without the lighting so um, you know it's funny these days uh, you know whenever you decide not to light a ship it feels like you're missing out on something or not doing something simply because you're not following through with that step but uh, you know not all the models need to be lit of course and uh, I think this worked out well uh, in the end. All right, well, if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. As I wrap up here, I just want to make mention now, uh, last year was kind of a record year for me putting together projects and uh, providing content for the channel. Um, this year, um, I, I just wanted to lay out the expectation I'm not going to be uh, um, working on quite as many projects. Um, so just bear that in mind as we go through the year. So the next one, I'm uh, getting all the things together for the EVA pod, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and so I look forward to working with that project. That one's going to be a little bit longer than this one, of course. All right, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate it, and uh, also thank you for tuning in on my new segment called Hot Off the Bench. Uh, I think it's going to be really a lot of fun to share your work uh, in that segment, and I've already gotten uh, pictures for the next one. So uh, my plan is to hopefully put together one of those little uh, segments every month. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.